Alright, let's see if this works. Is it going to put me back at the hub? I really hope it does. The amount of time this would have saved me if I knew this from the beginning. It does! Okay, if you ever play this DLC ever again and you need to get back to the hub, simply quit the game and come back. It is actually quicker. In fact, I think it's quicker than just driving through one of the roads. Just one. Like, if your computer's not, like, that bad. Because, oh my god. Alright, well, hang on, do we actually have anything to hand in? We do not. Alright then. Crimson Enclave. So, here we go. Let's go complete Borderlands 1. So, we actually want to go to... I believe it's this? I should have actually checked what it said on the, um... Quest. So, Crimson Enclave, yep. Always we go, let's finish the game. They're all level 31, yeah, I was level 32 when I came here, can I just point out. And of course, having done the DLC, I'm now massively overleveled. Then again, I suppose it's probably a good thing I did it this way, because if I didn't, then my, my, then my issue would have been... I'd have to do the DLC at some point, right? So it would have got to a certain point in the game where I would have done the DLC, I'd be overleveled a little bit, like for the entire game. Because there's no part of the game I've come across where I was underleveled. Like at no point did I come across an underleveled section. Hey, I'm going to have multiple missions here. I thought for some reason that was like, that's the last mission, is it? No, it's not. We've got to do this entire area next. Because this is like the, well, the second last area. The last area is actually the vault itself, which is probably right there, so. Now there's a point. If I kill the infantry here, does it count towards the quests? Well, for a start, these are the wrong type of infantry, but... But yeah, like... Every piece of DLC I would have done would have overleveled me a little bit for the game, and of course we don't want that. That's just something we don't want. So it's probably good I saved it for the end, so that I'd be the right level for the entire game, apart from the last section. And that's the easiest way to do it, because I mean, like the last section of the game isn't very difficult. So, at least if I'm going to be overleveled, it's only for a tiny part of the game, you know. Defenders weren't on the list, infantry weren't on the list. Alright. Are you? Yeah, that's the thing. I haven't come across a single piece of um, Crimson Lance in this zone so far who's actually one of the ones I need to kill for that quest in the other part of the DLC, so maybe we'll never find out. Right, so we have to go and. Transmitter codes. Yet yeah, no piece of loot in here is actually going to be useful for me, so I'll just pick it up. I won't even bother looking at it. Now, where is it? Here? Or is it inside? Yeah, we inside that. Right, let's go inside that. Go check it out. Some money on the way. So I'm a bit more relaxed now, having done all of the DLC for this game, so I don't need to worry about um, how long is it going to take. Like, this game isn't actually... From now on, there's not a huge amount left to do before the game is over. So it's probably a good thing. One of three. Because I can tell you now, um, once I've actually finished this game, I think I'll end the stream there because I want to start like from the beginning on a new stream on a new game, if that makes sense. So I was not even check if we needed to be up here. I just went up here. But yeah, like, I could start on the next game now, but that, I think that's a terrible idea. I want to start a new stream on it. Plus, I haven't even done the thumbnails for it yet, so... I want to upload it to YouTube. And uh, put in all the details and things like that. Or written the description, because that's another thing I always do, is uh, upload something to YouTube. It always has a description on it. Which also goes into the, um, the Twitch thing, as well. The only thing is, is, of course, you can only watch videos on Twitch that you've done for... I think it's two weeks. And, uh, of course, all of my streams I've ever done are on YouTube, so... Let's have a look. 
Where are we going? Just all the way to the south. Okay. So just keep running. Okay, overall, I have to say, um, I've actually enjoyed playing um, Roland. I'd say it's probably um, a close decision where I whether I actually preferred playing Mordecai or Roland. I think um, I'm probably going to go with Roland simply because, at least these days, I don't tend to play sniper type characters. I go for the guns blazing type people. The annoying thing is, though, is that I know full well that as a younger kid, I used to be very good at FPS games as a sniper. My aim was actually pretty good, and it's not taken long for me just to get worse and worse over time. Like, my aim these days is nowhere near as good as I was as a kid. Like, I don't know what's happened to me. Maybe it's all the meds I take. Maybe it's just my health has got worse over the years. Who knows? But uh, there was a time when I used to be very good at these games, and I'm just not as good these days now. So I suppose I'm not that bad, but as someone who used to play like um, like Quake in a real tournament, the highest difficulty and things like that, and just kind of breeze through it. I always used to play sniper characters on Call of Duty, but then again, a lot of people did that. But you know, I was actually good at it. It's when you go and play um, like games you've completed before, like old games you've completed before, and you realise that you're just nowhere near as good as you used to be. It's kind of kind of a bit of a letdown, really, but. I'm only saying that because like Mordecai was a very accurate sniper, whereas my aim on this is not very good. Really not. So I suppose it's kind of a good thing I've gone for the um like the guns blazing type characters, you know? Because you don't need to aim as much. Right, now last time we went up to get our reward, so I'm guessing this time we go down into the basement. Right. I'm also well aware I really don't need to be picking up um money here. I really don't, because there's literally no use for it. I already have enough money to um, complete the game on. Get all the ammo and stuff I'd ever need, but... Uh... Oh! It's actually a copy-paste of the last building design, okay. That thing is, is I like money. It's nice to see exactly how much money you finish the game on. God, I'm massively overleveled for this. So much so. Like 12 levels higher than these guys. Oh dear. I mean, yeah, you're basically just waiting around to see the story part of this. There's going to be no particular challenge in it now. But, um... Yeah, I know a lot of people is like... They, they always say that the end of this game is really, really bad. I mean... You have to bear in mind, obviously, like, I'm I'm too overleveled now for having done all the DLC. Oh, I'm actually full up. So, obviously, there's going to be no challenge element left. However, do bear in mind the story part of this. That's what you need to focus on, just the story. So, these creatures, the Guardians, we've come across them a little bit before. And you might be thinking, what the hell are the Guardians, then? Well, that's the thing. Nobody said anything about the Guardians yet. The Guardians have kind of been released into the world. And... I'll basic, basic what you've been told so far is nobody knows what the Guardians are. And everyone's kind of surprised that they're here. All we do know is... Basically, it's around the kind of time the vault will be opening again, so make of that what you will. Strange creatures being released out into Pandora, and the vault having been coming around the point when it would be open, or able to be opened. So whatever you make of that, you know, I'll leave that to you. I won't say anything, but of course, I have the bias of knowing what the ending is. And a lot of people don't like it. I think... Possibly the reason why people don't like the ending to this game is it's a vault. Literally because it's a vault. And because it's a vault, and at the beginning of the game they, they say, Oh, all these people, like, they think this is in the vault and that's in the vault. Like, all their hopes and dreams of, like, the, like, oh, like, power and wealth and all sorts of things are in the vault. So, the realistic thing is, is as they tell you at the beginning of the game, is nobody actually knows what's in the vault. That's just what people think is in the vault, which makes sense. Like, 
As soon as you say there's some sort of mysterious vault and nobody knows what's in it, everyone thinks of some sort of treasure. Whether it's money, treasure, it even says that women are in the vault. It's like, I don't know what they'll be doing in there this whole, like, few thousand years, but... It sort of builds up its own hype as to all these amazing things that could be in there. When, I don't know, maybe you have more of a logical mind and think, well, actually, this is some sort of ancient vault. What do you think's in it, you know? And I think because possibly people hype it up too much in their own mind as what could be in it, the fact that it's not what they expect, maybe they expected money and it's not money, or maybe they expected something else, like um, some sort of treasure, and it actually is money. Who actually knows, because I'm not going to tell you. So, just think about it like that, because when I played this game, I never really hyped it up to, as to what I thought would be in the vault. I just played the game, I enjoyed it as I went along, and then I came along the vault, and I was... I'm the more curious mind. Like, I don't think... Ooh, what's in the vault? What's these amazing things that it could possibly be? I reckon it's this, and then I get, like, upset if it's not what I think it is. I'm the more curious type. Instead, I'll think... Ooh, all these things could be in the vault. I wonder what's in it. That's just my thinking. I just wonder what's in it. I don't sort of set it in my mind as, oh, there's a vault with something in it that's amazing. It's this. I am determined in my mind to think this is what it is. And I will think that it's, like, this is what it is all the way through the game until I find out. That's how some people's minds actually work. So I can imagine that now, I'm not saying that's a bad way to think, because of course you can hype it up in your own mind and sort of build up this sort of interest as to what's in there. But basically, that can lead to being let down. Whereas so I'm the sort of curious type where I don't try and think too much about what it is, I just wonder about what it might be. So I think that's because just the way that my mind actually works, that um, that could be why it didn't actually, like, it didn't bother me. As to what's in the vault, I just thought it was like it was a it was an all right ending. Didn't say it was amazing. Didn't say it was bad. I thought it was all right. I actually just enjoyed playing Borderlands. I mean, if I didn't, I wouldn't be playing it again, you know. You're actually gonna hit me with those things or what? Also, not getting much XP from these guys, so I'm not really gonna bother shooting them too much. But so we have to go back and hand these in then. Let me just read this again, right? The transmitter console. Uh, the note Tannis gave you, rambling and disjointed, appeared to be written in the form of an argument with either an invisible cellmate or a rat. However, she also mentioned reactivating three network transmitter consoles, three separate buildings, and return to the main control console. Okay, I forget why we're actually doing that, though. What is the need for these three different things? I guess we'll find out when we hand it in. So... Oh, it's this little area here, yeah. I remember completing this. This is the thing, this is like, oh, well... About a week ago, wasn't it? Oh god. Still pick all this stuff up. Oh, full up on things. Not that we really need any, but... Okay, so we have to go fight past all these guys to get to... That room. Ah. I want to point out, I got completely shredded when I opened this part of this third level. I died. This is one of my deaths. Now he's getting completely shredded. Like, this many badass engineers got me killed. Uh, am I going the right way? I hope so. Let's see. Oh, it's back in here. Right, we missed it. Oh, it was actually this? Yeah, okay. It wasn't glowing green, so I just kind of walked past it. Ta-da! No time for who betrayed whom. Steel has taken the key and is already on her way to the vault. Hey, for me, take the bitch down. Okay, so we're trying to stop someone else from getting to the vault. I forget what we needed to do those three things for, but we are trying to beat someone to the vault, basically. That is something we were doing. Because we want to try and open the vault before anyone else does because we want what's in it. So, have a read of what this says. Find Steel. I know where the vault is and so does Steel. She took my key. You know, the one you worked so hard to get for this mi Sorry, for me? Well, she took it. That albino bitch is going to open the vault unless you can somehow find her and beat her to it. I'm marking waypoint at the location of the vault. 
I don't have to tell you what to do, do I? So yes, basically, open the vaults before anyone else does. Elite my ass. Whoa. I can see you. I don't know how you did it, but I can see everything. That's one we haven't seen in a while. You've surprised me this time. Listen, there is no time to waste. You must immediately reach the vault. Go now. Right, the race is on. Now, if I remember correctly, Steel is the woman who is from... I think it's Atlas Corporation? She warned us about what we were doing in Pandora like a long time ago. Basically saying that we shouldn't interfere with what's going on. Simply because, well, Atlas Corporation wants to open the vault. They want what's in it. it. It could be a different corporation, but it's one of the big corporations. Honestly, it doesn't really matter which one it is. They're all as bad as each other. So, is it down there? Yes, it is. Okay. Let's go see what's in there. First, we've got to get there, but, you know, there's like one guardian around here somewhere. So, yeah, this is probably going to be a short stream, but uh, it's probably going to be about, let's see, seeing as we're right at the end, it's probably going to be about two and a half, two hours, 45 minutes long. We still have a bit of playtime left, so... God, these guys are getting shredded. Now the thing is, is um, the last time I did this I was playing with two other people, so... The game gets a lot easier the more people you actually have with you, although I don't know if it spawns more enemies for you to fight as you play through it. I really don't know that, because I don't remember having any sort of difficulty playing this game. When I was actually playing it through like the first and second time, because I've played it definitely twice with other people. I played it a third time. But um, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Because, not trying to say we were amazing about it, I think it's just very easy. It's one of those games that's just very easy with more people. I'm guessing we have you that's what it was for. That. If you need anything at all, remember to use the commerce grid. I'm sure there's something helpful for you there, partner. Yeah, so basically the reason why we had to establish those three different things is simply because what we had to do is get the Echo Network back up so we could communicate with each other to let us uh, let each other basically know what's going on. Can I do anything else? No, just those two. I thought maybe I could actually get a new vehicle that we got in the DLC, but oh well. We're back to the only one you can drive. And there's no landmines! There's no time left. You must reach the vault by any means necessary. We will not get another opportunity in this lifetime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, the angel is still telling me what to do. And helping me, supposedly. So let's get a move on. Seriously, it feels very weird going from that last piece of DLC back to the regular Borderlands game, because it's just a hell of a lot less annoying. Uh, did I just drive all the way around and go the wrong way? Yes, I did. Actually up here somewhere? Oh, fuck, I'm just going to run. Crash my car now. It's like just around the corner over here. But we can't take the vehicle in here anyway, so... There it is. See, it's still bandits driving around in here. You'd think that um, what they might actually change is seeing as we're getting closer and closer to the vault, that they just put more Crimson Lance guys everywhere, you know? You'd think they'd do something like that. Because it just kind of shows that everywhere is changing because the Lance is getting closer. Oh. oh, that was sneaky. He went and dropped a bomb when he died. That was very, very cheap. But yeah, if you've got a team with you, I mean, if it's just the same amount of enemies, and you, just, you just kind of go through it very quickly. I mean, it's also like three times the firepower, bear that in mind as well. Because I also had, um, let's see, I was playing Mordecai. 
We had one person playing the Siren. And one person playing as Brick, I think it was. The Siren has a very useful power of basically like um creating this kind of mini black hole and everyone kind of just gets stuck together. So with this huge amount of enemies you can easily do that and well Brick just runs around with like a uh, his fist and a rocket launcher, so he has a lot of firepower there. Oh I could have just run straight down and drop down, good night. Oh well. Like it's three times the firepower. Three different people for them to shoot at, so it's the all of the firepower they have no longer focused on one person but focused on three. It just makes it a lot easier. And having more people with you just makes things easier. Oh, there's a picture for you. The descent. The hourglass is on the last few grains of sand. You must reach the vault by any means necessary. We will not get another opportunity like this in your lifetime. More hints have been dropped. We will not. Supposedly see some sort of angel just helping us get there. Why is she bothered, like, like so bothered about getting into the vault? I thought that's something we were supposed to do. Hmm? Just think about that for a moment. Badass Guardian. There it goes. Alright, I don't know why I'm bothering doing this, but hey, what you got? Yes, it is. Ooh, level 31. Oh, that's team stuff. If it's the team one, then it's not going to be as good. Now, do we really want to do the jumping puzzle and get that one? Go on. Not that I need what's in it, but i got to have a look, you know? Also, this is weird. Here we go. Like, my, ca my character was hovering a little bit there. Kind of threw me off. Yeah, so just knife rifles we don't need. Oh, God. Just to get back. Just get back. There we go. So, we're going to sort of start our descent into the vault. Like, this sort of... Um, design of like basically the terrain around you is, is a hint that we're getting uh, close to something related to the vault because the vault and all this sort of thing has the same sort of design. Alright, thanks for hanging around and I will. Take some ammo as we go. Now this is like the safe way down, but you could literally just drop from the top and like land all the way down at the bottom. Probably wouldn't make much of a difference. Because the fall damage in this is very, very uh, forgiving. Well, I just would rather not do that because I might miss something. And what did I just do? God, I can't get back up there. Yeah, I kind of like missed that bit of terrain there. I'd like to go back up to it if I can. And it's an invisible wall, not letting me back up. Okay, there's actually um, something to pick up up there, and there's also some guns right there. Let's see if I can actually get back up there. I would like to check it out if I can. As I said, it's the curiosity inside, but I want to just know what's in there. I mean, we'll get this, but... I actually don't think there's anything up there. It's just this, isn't it? Nothing useful there. So we can run along this, but you can't jump back on that. It's really weird. What are they fighting? Must be the Guardians. Guardians of the Vault. I don't think we can hit shit from all the way up here. Which I suppose makes the um, the lance more useful because they can actually hit these things in the air. I can't do that as well as they can. And we don't actually have to shoot any of the people in here. We can just run past them, but it's something to do on the way. There's actually some weapons over there. I can't hit it from there, can I? Took a shield, but yeah. Wanna shoot at me instead? Okay. Alright, what you got? It's 
we needed. More ammo. Kind of looks like that's the vault, but it's not. It's around here somewhere. Speaking of around here somewhere. Ow! I didn't actually bow like an idiot. Side we go. The interesting thing is, is, you keep finding lance soldiers in here. We're like, we're supposed to beat them to it, but how far have the lance soldiers actually got? You know. Oop. Just made it. Is there actually anything up here? Or did I just do that for fancies? I just did that for fancies. Yeah, the way down is actually over here. Fight's still going on up there. It also reminds me of um, you come across these ancient tombs in Skyrims where all the torches are still burning. It's always really weird, don't you think? Iridian Promonitory. Okay. But yeah, like I can understand like some of the tombs in Skyrim and Oblivion, they all have um, like these sort of magical candles on them. That makes sense that they'd still be lit. They're magical. That's kind of how magic works. Like you can do basically whatever. But you go into these ancient tombs and the torches and the candles are still going. It's like, why is this even here, you know? And how deep have the lands got? They've even like installed shops and things like that down here. And despite how deep we got, we're outside again. We are very, very near the end of the game now. I said, like, half an hour, 45 minutes. It's probably only going to be half an hour. Like, we're very, very nearly here. Arc Guardian. Bye. Okay, we're basically going along this cliff edge. Principal Guardian. Now, is that a principal of a school, or is it a guardian with principles? Who knows? Well, Lance is still here. I really don't need to fight all of these people. There's, if there's anything down there, it'll be like little boxes of ammo and things like that, so... Keep on exploring. None of those shots hit him. Wow. This is also the thing I've, I've got to deal with, is like... Weapons that are really only good at like point blank. Like, as someone who only goes for damage, this is... This is the sacrifices I have made with um, weapons I've decided to take on this character. Because the advantage of um, playing with someone like Mordecai is it doesn't matter how far away they are, you have a weapon for it. I mean, for a start, the sniper rifles are in long range, obviously. But you don't even have to use the pistols. You can just, like, blank shot someone with a sniper rifle if you want to. Turret can just solo all of you guys, to be honest. I'm also keeping an eye on uh, how much ammo I've got. Wow, he can hit me from all the way over there? Damn. Speaking of ammo, yeah, these are the sorts of things you would find if I'd actually explored a bit more into the fights. There we go. Is one of those very slow health regeneration? Hang on, I need to double check that. Because I know it's like an old thing to find. But the items I have, some of them are like really old, like the shield I've had for fucking ages. Most of health regeneration. It's actually as good as what I have right now, actually. So, oh. You know what? He's got a very long range laser, and I have nothing that can actually shoot him at all, so. I also don't have to pick up every single weapon I find as well, so. Did I even pick up any of the ammo back there? I don't think I. Got any assault rifle ammo, did I? You know what? There's some guns over it. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Let's go fight somebody. Come on. They have all the range and I don't. Oh, now you're a lot closer. There we go. See, he could still hit me from all the way over there. That's cheating, that is. Never have enough stuff. There we go, we need all of that. Just gonna ignore Eva keeping that. 
you come closer, that's fine. But anyone else? Keep it going. It also makes you think, people have been searching for this vault for fucking ages. You'd think it's like very, very deep underground. It's really not. It's just on the side of a cliff somewhere. It isn't even that high up in the air because we've been going up, down a lot. In fact, we went from like a, a desert kind of area further underground. So honestly, the fact that it's even snowing is actually kind of strange. Like you get snow in um, hot areas if it's really high up because of course it's colder up there. It's colder the higher you go, which kind of bypasses some of the, uh, the heat. Yeah, the kind of situation we're in is we've gone lower and lower and lower down, and now it's snowing. It's like, hmm, very strange. Oh, you know that hurt. All right, we're making our way over. It's a good thing it keep going there. Almost jumped up a cliff. Still tons of guardians. This is the thing, like, they're interested in um, putting guardians and lances, like, along these different paths you're going along. The situation is, though, is how did the, like, the lances get this far and not kill all the guardians on the way, you know? I mean, they've clearly been here. Look at all this stuff. I can only imagine that the lances basically got all the way to the vault and these guardies just sort of teleported in about the same time we arrived at like all the different uh, guarded spots. See that makes sense to me I guess. I kind of can't like, answer my own question really with my own this kind of it. idea but... The reason you're here. I guided you to this point and you've done so well. Know that you are ready for this. When the vault opens, brace yourself. I believe in you. You can do this. Very nearly there. I don't want to use my um, my turret too much. I'm just it's got a long cooldown, and we're just so close to the actual vault itself. I just want to use it on what's in there. So of course, we have yet to find steel. Who, unsurprisingly, is a boss in this game. And again, that's not exactly a spoiler, is it? Oh, through a fight! Through a fight! Getting busy. Okay, I would actually like to get uh, some more ammo for I go into the last bit, but here we go. Here is the vault. You have failed to listen to Commandant Steel. I've warned you time and again, yet you persist on ignoring my orders. The contents of the vault are rightfully the property Atlas Corporation, yeah, I thought so. But you... <laughs> you belong to me. Those are all of the keys that they took from us, and now... Look at some save icon, surprise. Sergeant, get your team ready to go inside. However, you weren't looking when you opened the vault. You should have been looking. Don't give up. This creature may be immortal in its own realm, but in this reality, Wait, what? it cannot survive without a host. I was looking at it in the... Oh, God. All right, fine. As I said before, I'm severely outleveled for this boss, so... The Destroyer. Yeah, that was kind of weird then. Like, I was looking at the actual character, like the actual boss. I went to throw my turret down. It sort of maybe looked sideways for some reason, but... Oh, well, there we go. Opened the vault. I'm sorry I couldn't warn you about what was in it, but for you to be there to stop it, 
It couldn't have unfolded any other way. You did well, and your actions haven't gone unrewarded. The key won't open the vault for another 200 years, but I'm sure Tannis will pay you quite the fortune for it. Now go. I'll be watching. So there you go. This angel was actually someone from Hyperion Corporation who wanted you to open the vault. Atlas was determined to get it for loot. Hyperion knew what was in the vault. And how do you get someone to go over and fight a gigantic beast? No one's going to want to fight that. So instead, you carry on with the whole clap trap into planning into assassin. Yeah. So instead, what you do is... You tell everyone that there's some sort of amazing sort of thing to find in there and everyone gets obsessed with finding the vault and eventually someone will be there when it opens and they'll have to fight it. But I think the problem a lot of people had with um, the whole vault thing is I think a lot of people were expecting to fight a boss at the end but you don't get to see anything in the vault because what's in the vault is just the monster, it's just the monster and I think that's what a lot of people had the problem with why they got really pissed off about like that was such a letdown is because you don't fight the boss and go in and see like hordes of treasures and things like that. You don't see anything like that. In fact, you don't even get to look inside the vault. It's just a portal and that beast opens and you fight it and that's it. And I think that's probably why a lot of people got let down. Like I think it's alright. You, you get to fight a boss at the end. It's kind of what you're expecting. I mean, I would prefer the end of the game to be a lot better than that. Don't get me wrong, but like I was a little bit disappointed, but I didn't think it was that bad an ending, you know. But of course, that's that's the issue a lot of people had is that they don't even show you anything inside the vault. It's not a boss and the vault; it's just a boss outside the vault. You don't even go in it, and as a result, a lot of people just kind of got pissed off about it. They're like, well, you know, where's what I hoped to find? I mean, sure, I get it. Well, some people didn't get it, but they get the fact that a lot about what... Well, the way the story is done is a lot of people are told lies about what's in the vault to, to make them get so excited to want to find it. And because of the stories of all the treasures and amazing things you can find in there, Atlas Corporation got obsessed with finding it. Of course, a big, powerful military corporation want to find out what's in the vault. I mean, they could have taken it on themselves, realistically. But that's basically what they wanted to happen. They wanted people to get obsessed with what was in the vault so that they would have to fight what was in it. That's basically the whole plan of misleading people. And I guess a lot of people who played the game also felt, felt like felt misled. Like they didn't get to find anything they wanted to find in the vault. Nobody would have thought, ooh, a sort of massive vault that can have all these sort of wondrous things in. I wonder if it's just a boss, and that's it. I think that's where people like like got let down, and I was I was hoping to find a lot more. I mean, I do know that in Borderlands 2 they kind of um, tried to clear up a little bit, and it's less about vaults and it's more about other things. I mean, the setting is actually quite interesting. I like it. It's like in the future, like off in space somewhere. There's all these sorts of I don't know, it's sort of like a more realistic setting really, isn't it? You've got the major corporations, you've got all the bandits running in these sort of like non-militarised areas because there's like there's no security, there's no police or anything. Kinda of feels a bit Mad Max in certain places, but it makes sense. It makes sense that, that basically that's what the area is like. It's on Pandora a place where there's just like there's not really any water, that's kind of what it's like, and it's interesting. And that's definitely why I like the game. It's just if you compare the ending of the game to the rest of the game, I would agree that it is definitely on a downhill. Like, it's a very interesting story, then, like, it gets very interesting, interesting, then down the end it's kind of like... It's basically as if, um... I mean, you can't say for sure, like, obviously you'd have to look it up, but it feels rushed, don't you think? Like, they wanted to do a boss, and they wanted to do, like, a whole vault thing, but... Maybe they didn't really have enough time? Or... Maybe they just made a story that they themselves kind of built up so much they couldn't complete it by themselves, if that makes sense. As in, what I mean is they've got this really interesting story about a vault, but because of the story they've chosen, 
what ending do you put on the end there, you know? Like, what could they think of to put in the vault? Maybe they couldn't really think of what would be, like, the best thing people could find in there. And honestly, killing the boss, then walking inside the vault, seeing tons and tons of treasure, all sorts of mystical artifacts and things, ancient weapons, like, we found some of them in the game. They're not very good weapons, but they're basically ancient guardian weapons. Like, just walking in there as the end part of the cutscene, like, you defeat the boss, you walk into the vault, even if it wasn't like a huge vault, just like big enough, like a large cave, like for example, um, a large cave like where we were going when we were going to fight um, General Knox. Like, that, like a huge area, like that big. It doesn't have to be gigantic, like an entire zone size, but just a big area full of money, full of like ancient weaponry and artifacts and things like that. If it was the end cutscene of you beat the boss, you walk into the portal, and it's just like whichever characters you played as, with whatever like you've coloured them as, whatever weapons you were last holding. Just you walk in and sort of going, wow, this is the vault. And then the story ends. If they did that, I think that would be a far, far better ending. And the fact that I've literally just come off that off the top of my head as just thinking about how they could have ended it, makes me think, I don't know, maybe they did actually rush the ending, because it's not difficult to think that they could have had something more interesting as in the vault. Like, sure, maybe it's like the monster's not supposed to be in the vault, but maybe, like, what people think is in the vault is kind of true. However, I don't know, maybe there was a problem with a monster on Pandora 200 years ago, and they didn't know how to actually get rid of the monster, they couldn't stop the monster. However, what they managed to do is they led the monster into the vault, and then they locked it in there. Maybe that's why they could have done it. And it could be some people knew that the monster had been locked away in there, no, nobody was capable of killing it. However, they led in the heroes to do it. How do you lead the heroes in? You tell them what's actually in there. Like, I think that would have been a much better way they could have ended the story. So, yeah. That's how I would have done it, at least, if I had a chance to write the story. Like, sure, gigantic monster, but I would have said it got locked away from 200 years back when the vault was last opened, and, like, nobody could defeat it. So you, you lure the heroes towards it, as many heroes as you can, which would have been a tier, team of four if you had everyone in there, like all the characters. And that would have been a much better ending. A way better ending, I think. But hey, that's, that's basically my rant. I think that would be much, much better and a very easy way they could have ended the game. Because they got um, quite a bit hit back way back then. By a hit back, I mean like a lot of people finished the game and went, What the fuck is this? This is garbage. I hate this ending. I mean, like, people lashed out more than they should have done, but fortunately, it kind of very quickly kind of got swept under the covers because. Basically, people enjoyed playing a lot about Borderlands, as in, like, the rest of the game is actually just very, very good. DLC came out, people enjoyed the DLC, like, I, I, th I think the Dr. Ned one was really good, the um, Arena one, very mediocre, there was three tiny areas, and it was just, like, time-consuming, just do it over and over and over and over again in the, these three maps, then do the three maps all over again. And then the last one you've just seen me do the ending of there was so badly designed with all the driving. And then there you go. Mission, destroy the monster or destroy the destroyer ready to turn in. Shops have new inventory. So yeah, here we go. Actually, anything useful to pick up from here. Let's go have a look. Yeah, because that's it. Like, there's no, there's no vault. That's, that is the vault. It is literally... A portal with a monster in it and there's nothing else there that's that's the kind of the letdown you know so let's have a look what do we actually have in here grab the vault key and return to tannis in her rust commons dig site rust commons let's go and find that there's a reason i didn't just turn off the stream there is stuff to do afterwards where's rust commons i'm sure it's on here somewhere Rust commons this is the thing, like, it's so far back. Well, that's the DLC. There we go, that's Rust Commons East. There's Rust Commons East and West. 
I need to remind myself where she is. She's in the northeast. But is, is she in the northeast of the east or the northeast of the west? God, that was tricky to say. Hey, let's get you rolling, man. Let's get you rolling, man. Uh, she is in Rust Commons East. Hang on, she's supposed to be up there, isn't she? But hey, okay. That's the vehicle thing, hang on. So we are, Rust Commons West. There we go. Uh, the underpass is the top area, I think. It should have been uh, like, probably like a week and a half since I last did this kind of stuff, or like two weeks or something. Okay, so she is in fact actually yeah no correct she is actually just over here. I'll grab a vehicle. I was wrong about that. She's actually just over here. Mounting up. Mounting up indeed. All right. Now let's not crash into one of these things and just explode because that would be terrible. But just saving a little bit of time driving around the corner. Let's go speak to Patricia and give her the vault key, which is a terrible idea because she's a bit mental, as I'm sure you guys remember. As for this shit, what level is it? Level 20, I'm just going to run past it. These guys. Now watch just to save the hassle. Because they're going to be back. I love this damn thing. There we go. You just do my business for me. There we go. Thank you for bringing this to me. The cash sums cover the hardships you've endured. And ensure you continue silence. The key won't work again for a hundred years, but I must keep it from. Actually, hang on. Actually, read up all this. No. In fact, that's all I can really look at. You can't look at any. Whatever she says, I don't know. There you go. Oh, hang on. Let's keep falling to the wrong hands. In the meantime, I'll continue my research. It appears that there is more to be learned from the Iridians and weaponry and spaceships. The Iridians are the aliens which planted the vault. But then again, I think you figured that out already, considering the Guardians are a bit weird looking. Maybe they're aliens. Well, duh. Yes, they are. Level 44. Just. I can't even see how much XP I've got, which is enough for that. Finish off quick charge. And the thing I would have gone for next uh, probably was nothing on here. Like, I would, if anything, I'd probably go for um, fire rate recoil reduction and assault and things like that. And that's just magazine size and things. Like, honestly, I'm the type of person where out of any of the special things here, like medic, was something very clear that I wanted. The rest of the stats in here just kind of build up your generic stats and go for that. You're really supposed to focus on their special ability and improving that thing, but honestly, I think this is a bit shit, so. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, that is everything. There you go. I don't know why I'm sitting with money, but. And there we go. I'm about as tired as Claptrap now, so. Thank you all for watching, and of course, those of you who saw the last stream will have seen this already, because I've caught. I thought I was going to finish the last DLC last stream, but no, we've actually spent, well, probably about six hours on it. There we go, that's a lot longer than I thought, and I still haven't finished all of it technically. Those last missions are a complete, last missions, I say. Those last missions are basically just a complete waste of time. The only one that isn't is completing that boss that is level 61. And if you saw me walk in there and then instantly get one-hitted by one of the minions that was next to the boss, yeah. I don't think I can defeat that. So, of course, the next stream will be on Wednesday at 10 past 7 GMT. And we are playing Borderlands the pre-sequel, which thank you very much to Navota for buying it for me. Borderlands the pre-sequel is set between Borderlands 1 and Borderlands 2. It's the story that links the two games together. Because I was originally just going to go straight to Borderlands 2, but thankfully we get the story in between. As for the character I'm going to play, I have looked at all four characters. There's someone who is slightly similar to Roland, but basically Nisha is more to do with pistols and like fast shooting and like uh, dual wielding pistols and things like that. She is basically the gunslinger and so I was far more interested in playing. So that's who I'm going to be playing throughout the entirety of that because it is another four player game. And of course, as I started recording it today, is uh, Space Marine. The first video for that will be out tomorrow at 5pm GMT. So I'm just got to get um, 
some more rendering done. I've got to do the uploads. I've got to do the story and things like that. Well, I say the story. I, I do all episode descriptions. In case anyone has noticed whoever's been on my YouTube channel, every single video has a description in it because I can be bothered to put the effort in. A lot of people just kind of leave it there. But anyways, so as for leaving it there, I will see you guys on Wednesday. We'll be playing the next game on. And I'm quite interested to see what it is because I have never played the pre-sequel. Never. So it'll be all new for me. So thank you for watching and good night.